I kind of feel like I needed a frolic through a field of flowers after I finished it, and I don't even care for flowers. Norman Reedus has written a fiction novel, everyone, and as someone who has spent the entirety of their 20s watching The Walking Dead, I couldn't pass it up. I had to see how well his acting skills transferred over to his writing skills, and folks, kind of not great. It's questionable, but I love his effort. And he's rich, so my opinion really doesn't matter, but I'm going to tell you anyways. I do want to mention I am going into this review as a fantasy lover. What he has written clearly is not fantasy, and I don't read contemporary fiction ever. I don't even own a single contemporary novel on my bookshelf. Is that correct? Yep, fantasy and sci-fi. I'm a nerd. So as a typical fantasy lover, I knew nothing about this book called The Ravaged, besides Norman Reedus's name plastered on the cover, and Frank Bill. But let's be honest with ourselves, none of us are here for him. That's his name at the very bottom in very teeny tiny print marketing. So of course you can go into this review with a grain of salt. First up, I'd like to give a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes. People from around the world and hundreds of countries use Skillshare for inspiration to straight up learn brand new skills and find good ways to use it. From creative to business, just really cool hobbies, um, Skillshare has a buttload of things to learn. Now for me personally, I use Skillshare kind of as like a refining for my skills I already have. Okay, for example, I have been really wanting to up my video editing skills. I feel like every YouTuber wants that um, and make my videos feel a little bit more fast paced since they are mostly all sit down videos and that can be uh, quite boring. So with Ali Abdal's help, especially if you're looking to refine your skills or even just get started on YouTube, it's ad free, a bunch of languages are supported and new premium classes are added every week. So the first thousand people to go and click the link in my description box which will get you a one month free trial of Skillshare so go check it out thanks to them for sponsoring today's video I will start this off positively because cover design a plus claps all around you spot this in your local bookstore you're going to pick it up no denying the juicy red lips so this is set in our modern day world we're following multiple characters all very different from one another in very different circumstances dealing with what life is throwing at them they have all been through some shit, but they do have one thing in common and that is they are in search of something more. Like more subscribers. Click that subscribe button. We have Hunter, who we find quitting his mechanic job and receives news his father, who taught him everything, has passed away, so he takes a road trip to California. And we have Jack, who is a man in his 60s, who has lost his mother, wife, and daughter, and now leaves behind all of his riches to travel to South America after receiving his mother's last dying words to run. No cool curse or witchcraft to be had, though. We actually find him getting beaten up when he's introduced. And then we have Anne, our female perspective, obviously someone I was going to relate to more, and this story definitely needed a masculine break. Um, she's a 17-year-old who runs away from abusive alcoholic parents and meets up with a gang of train hoppers. Unfortunately though, uh, she doesn't find a fantasy portal to jump into, but then that would have made it worth reading. And that's it! Um, I've described the entirety of the book for you. You don't have to read it now. <laughs> You're welcome. For real though, uh, the setup for the characters were great, sounded interesting, tragic backstories you hope to see redemption for, but they just don't go anywhere. Typically, you can expect characters to converge on one another and meet up, but they do not. Also, can normally expect an ending or conclusion, or heck, even bouts of character development where growth occurs so that it stays crispy and satisfying, and you don't get that either. And when it didn't have an ending, my fantasy-wired brain was like, oh, maybe it has a sequel or a companion novel in the future, and I didn't see any plans for one. Um, um, and I know not every book has to be wrapped up with a pretty bow, it can be open-ended, but I just wasn't satisfied with anything. And to come out of a novel not feeling satisfied is one of the worst feelings. So I guess if you want a really gritty slice of life type story, then you got it here. On that note, I do highly recommend the audiobook if you decide to give this a try, because Norman Reedus himself narrates it. And honestly, I wasn't getting through this book any other way than having someone read along for me. I think he does a great job on that front, um, he doesn't change or fluctuate his voice voice for trait characters at all, so keep that in mind. But yeah, his voice adds to the gritty, manly story for sure. In fact, this is very much written in a very stereotypical, burly, masculine way. 
tough motorcycles, hound dogs, drunk men fighting. I fought in Iraq. Women wearing no bras and Rita's really wants you to know that. Here's how to fix a lawnmower with a razor blade and some grease. <laughs> you know, it's got that vibe. It's like Norman Reedus' Instagram in book form. I kind of feel like I needed a frolic through a field of flowers after I finished it, and I don't even care for flowers. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who plays Negan in The Walking Dead, him and Norman had a show together where they rode motorcycles across the country, met people during the journey, and that very much reminded me of this, but imagine that in word format. A fun and interesting TV show, not so much in book form. And honestly, it really seems like if you are a very avid reader, like you have a library or your house is made of books, you don't have walls, just bookshelves. Um, you're going to see the flaws way more in this story. Maybe compared to someone who reads one to three books a year, nothing wrong with that. It's the same with video games. Throw in a video game veteran and they're going to see the crushing demise that was cyberpunk compared to someone who is a much more casual gamer and thinks characters rendering in two feet in front of you and floating vehicles is just a normal thing. Cyberpunk was actually unplayable for me on the PS4, but thankfully I got lucky and acquired a PS5 pretty early on and was actually able to play it with minimal bugs. Okay, well nothing game breaking more like. Anyways, The Ravage. There's a lot of reviews on Amazon that start with, I hate reading, but I loved this book. And then you go on Goodreads to people who average like five or more books a month and didn't like it. Um, I'm not saying that's exactly how it is. Of course, there's going to be outliers, but just in general, that seems to be the common theme and I find that interesting. There is uh, something else I want to mention because it put a really bad taste in my mouth. Norman uses this word, um, I'm putting it on the screen for those of you who are just listening, to insult someone's intelligence pretty early on in the book, like chapter three, I think. Like, whatever. If you don't think there's anything wrong with that word, there's nothing I can say that's going to change your mind if that's the case. But just think about it for a second before adding it to your book. A lot of society has realized and connected the dots on why that word especially is harmful and just not cool to use. But Norman Reedus used it in it just felt like a huge disconnect from reality. Like, he could have easily used something different, like dumber than a squirrel. That kind of fits his vibe. Hell, even dumb as a blonde, I don't care. Um, the R word, though... Uh, it was just super cringy. By the way, I'm not mentioning this to try and cancel Norman Reedus. He's an older dude with a very rugged stature. Could have written it without thinking. Editor could have even done it. I don't know. I feel like I'm being devil's advocate, but I'm mentioning it for future readers who might find it uncomfy like I did. So that is my experience with The Ravage by Norman Reedus. I personally found it to be like a filler episode in The Walking Dead, and there's a lot of those. So maybe since he has that first-hand experience with storytelling with TV show scripts, it kind of rubbed off into the story. If you are new to this channel, then you should know I will never ever tell you not to read a book. I can only give you my first impressions, my personal thoughts who I think will like this book who are not like it. Um, I didn't get anything out of it, unfortunately, but maybe you will. Tell me below if you've read this because I would love to know. Did you like it? Did you find what Norman Reedus was going for? Um, I'd love to know your opinion. If you enjoyed this video at all or um, got anything out of it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up for me because it really helps me out. And don't forget to check out that Skillshare offer. Click the link down below and you will get a one month free trial on me. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, happy reading.